world record in the 400 freestyle. We're going to keep an eye on her in the first half of this video. We are going to watch the full race. I'm going to give my commentary technique analysis. And in the second half of the video, we're actually going to break down why this race was so fast, how she conducts her technique, and what you can actually learn from it as a swimmer. So you can see her right there in the middle of the pool in the white cap. She dominates the race from start to finish. I'm going to go ahead and put some splits up on the screen as she rolls through it. Remember, the 400 freestyle is 850s in the short course version of the pool. First 50, she's out in a 27.41. For reference, Titmus had the prior world record at a 26.93. So she's actually out a little bit slower than the prior world record. And what you see, a lot of this performance actually came on the second half. And we're going to talk about the technique and mechanics that made that possible. So as you see her right there, uh, in complete control of this race, this is the Chinese championships for short course. Now, if you're wondering, like, who is this? Who are we watching right now? She is a young swimmer from China. She's only 20 years old. And when she was 19, there she split 29.31. Prior world record split was a 29.15. So she's still behind the split of the prior world record, but she made up for it on the second half. Anyway, at the Olympics in Tokyo, she got bronze in this event. She swam a 401. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments, what she's capable of long course. And she also was the gold medal uh, swimmer on the relay, the 4x200 freestyle relay where China won gold. There she's splitting a 29.55, and the prior split was a 29.38. So she is uh, right on pace with world record speed, but she destroyed the world record, and it really came on the second half. There you see her on the technique. Now, it's interesting. She breathes actually on both sides, which is not very common. Normally, you're going to see swimmers at this distance, 200 and above. You're going to breathe every two strokes. Uh, she's mixing in a lot of uh, random breaths here and there. So there she splits a 29.61. Now she's officially splitting ahead of the world record pace. Titmus from Australia was a 29.91. We have a nice rivalry between Titmus, Ledecky, and, and the swimmer we're watching right now. So to see the three of them battle uh, towards the end of this year and even into next year in the next Olympic cycle, it's very exciting. Ledecky actually has a lot more experience. She's known as the distance queen, but uh, not if these two ladies have something to say about it. There we go, 29.39. She's really under splitting the prior world record pace. She took half a second. If these two athletes were racing, now you would start to see something happen. Um, actually, she would be behind still, and she'd be trying to pull it in. So remember, in the second half of this video, we're going to break down. I'm going to pause. We're going to draw, annotate all over her stroke. But right now, I just wanted you guys to appreciate the sheer distance that she has. I mean, she's basically swimming this race all by herself, and she just attacked the entire thing. Um, right there, split a 29.39, uh, and yeah, just absolutely destroying the field. Um, prior split there, actually, I, I might have just repeated that, I'm sorry. <laughs> but she's basically holding 29 lows all the way through. And look at how far ahead she is. She has half a pool length over, I mean, these lines don't do it justice, but she has literally like half a pool length across the whole field coming in here. So that the second to last fit, split, split was a 29.0. And the world record split prior by Titmus was 29.7. So she's three quarters of a second taken off the split. And there you can see, we're going to talk about the breath and the body position, the tempo. We're going to talk about that here. She's just about to wrap things up. And just like a freight train coming home. I mean, she's only 20 years young. And uh, it's remarkable here. Final 50, uh, sorry, it's 27.78, not 29.78. Let me write that down. 27. 0.78 and that final split uh, compared to the prior world record was a 29.2 so she took a second and a half off the prior split by Titmus, and the total time was a 351.3 that takes like two and a half seconds off the world record that's absolutely mind-blowing um, I'm gonna go ahead and skip right through here I want to get to these splits just so we can highlight what we're looking at here so again uh, this is the hundred splits you look at the first hundred you know, out in 56.7. You look at the second 159. Pretty similar to prior world record, but it's all in that third and fourth 100. You compare that to the prior world record. I mean, literally 2.2 seconds off the last 100. And that's how we get to that 351.3. Incredible swim. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Who's going to do it in long course? What is the time going to look like? But until we get there, we're going to do some analysis on the actual stroke. So 
I have a, uh, an image here, and this is very representative of the breath position. So I want to draw a line across her face to show what the angle is of the head position. And this line that I'm drawing now is a, ver is a horizontal line, which is the plane of the water. Now, ideally, you want to minimize the angle that's right there. You know, if we were to draw an angle there, maybe that's like 30 degrees. But one eye and one one eye is above the water and one eye is below the water. That means you have a good head position because when you have the head position like this, if you, the lower you sink your head, the higher your hips are going to go within reason, right? So you don't want to be looking, you know, at your feet, but you're looking relatively down. And now let's focus on the hand position. So the elbow, we have a high elbow here. The elbow, and I'm drawing a line where the elbow is, and I'm going to draw a line where the hand is because the elbow is always above the hand, both above and below the water. This is extremely important to think about. It's very easy to see above the water. You know, hopefully I can do this analysis again. And we can get it under the water. But we want to have the elbow above the hand at all times. And if you watch swimming with a critique eye, with a little bit closer view, you're going to notice this when you watch above and below the water. So now we're going to go back to the race. I want to actually you to pay attention to these things, both the head position. Remember, she's breathing every three or four strokes, which is not very common. If you breathe every um, you know, three strokes, that's fine. You're going to get more balanced. She's a very balanced stroke. Typically, you're going to see every two, breathing every two, that is, in the uh, 200 and up. Anything 200 and up, you're going to see breathing every two strokes, and that builds a little bit easier rhythm. And if you notice with her, she's not really doing that. She's kind of breathing whenever she feels like it, and she has a, a pattern. She probably does this in training, so it's not very weird for her. Now, if you pay attention to the head position, look at her hips. Her whole body line is above the water. Great body position, and yeah, she's taking a lot of breaths. You know, maybe she can clean that up. She doesn't need maybe 10% of the breaths that she's taking, but that comes from training, and she's a young swimmer. Now, I want to actually... Uh, we'll come to that in a little bit when she took that tick that breath because you can really see the the body position. So I'm going to zoom in on that right now. So look what happens when she lifts her head up for the breath. This is actually killing a lot of speed. So you can see the angle is most severe at this point, and that angle we want to minimize it because the higher you lift your head, the lower your hips are going to go, and that's actually going to slow you down. So I'm going to draw some lines and angles on here. You can see that. Um, whether it's 17 degrees, 15, whatever, it doesn't really matter. More so the fact that the head position is being elevated, which means the hips are going to sink. So she's doing a remarkable job, obviously. She's going world record pace. But you can see these little details at this elite level can make a huge impact, whether it's head position, the way your hand is entering the water. She's got a really consistent six-beat kick, um, which you will see actually more so in the 400 and down. You start to see the kick kind of fall apart, anything above the 400. But for these elite swimmers, this is in uh, quarter speed, there it was. And you can see the breath right there. For elite swimmers, the 400 and down can maintain a solid six-speed kick. That's no problem. And, I mean, look, she just completely controlled the race. I'm really excited to see what she can do in the long course version. Remember, at the Olympics in Tokyo, she won a 401, and that was good enough for the bronze medal. She was there with Ledecky and Titmus. But here's the thing, guys. She just won a 351. So... Obviously, she would have gone faster if this was a long course pool than a 401. The question is, would it have been a 356, a 355, a 354? I don't really know. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. It would definitely be under four minutes, I'd like to think. So I'm curious you guys' perspective. If you want more analysis like this, make sure you subscribe and let me know in the comments. And if you want more awesome swimming content, make sure you subscribe to the My Swim Pro YouTube channel. I do Q&A video responses to your questions on that channel. So if you guys are looking to improve your swimming, if you want to take your swimming to the next level, swim faster and smarter than ever before, I can do video responses to your questions on the My Swim Pro page. So I'll see you guys over there. Wish you the very best and happy.